Okay, recording. So here we've got the the tracks designed for the micro tractor, starting with the the base simplest design that we could ever think of for tracks. If we're gonna, so basically we've got our universal wheel motors that the issue there for a very narrow device. Of course, we got uh, issues about the width of the machine since the universal wheel units are pretty pretty long. Um, but if you look at standard track design well you need a drive cog so that that's what we're showing in the side view here the 20 diameter 20 inch diameter drive cog and then there's um rest of it is idlers and on the other side you have drive on the other wheel but it's not symmetric as you see it's like on one side it's the second to the front if you look at the side view if you call the left side the front the second wheel to the right from the left is the drive on this side, but on the other side it will have to be the other one. So, but each side would have four drive or cog or just idlers basically. So one drive, the rest are idlers. And we need that little five inch one that we see there. Uh, so there's a, there's a tiny one, the five inch one, because there's a hydraulic motor that's gonna be kind of sticking into into the tracks from the other side. Um, right. So let's see if you look at a top view this is another way to look at it that's actually a, a good good view it's page number seven in the document so that's how it would actually look and that's the actual geometry if you have 22 inches well no 22 that's not 22 that's 20 where's that 22 coming from that's 20 inches that's five four inch tube widths for for that oh yeah but the 22 inch comes in that the actual wheel unit from the front plate the red wheel unit to the back where the motor is mounted is actually 22 inches so it's going to stick out two two inches and then there's the motor that is another eight inches so it's going to be sticking out 10 inches that means it's sticking out into the track but in this design it looks like 56 inches what is what we would have all together uh, basically the drive wheel is 20 inches, the idlers are 12 inches, and there's a little 5 inch track hanger. And that is essentially so that the track does not hit the, the hydraulic motor or its hoses. So that's why in slide number 8 I drew out there's the back of the motor and the hydraulic fittings that are on the hydraulic motor that will um, you just have to be careful that they don't hit anything so they have to be tightly bound and, and that 5 inch idler is what keeps the track from falling onto the, the the hydraulic motor so why 12 inches and 20 inches well 20 inches is a nice small size that's decent it gives us about still gives us about almost 4,000 pounds of pushing force from the micro tractor that has two drive motors so that's I mean more power than we need um, so and then the 12 inch diameter just something that would make the track small enough that for a micro tractor it still works but this can be generalized to if you use multiple ones of these tracks they can be scaled I mean right now the 20 inch drive wheel is on a 3 inch drive shaft so that's super heavy duty and I'm considering for the first prototype, probably for the uh, all the idlers, we can make them probably just two inch shafts. That's still plenty. I mean, the the micro track itself is going to weigh about a thousand pounds or so. Um, so that's. But the way it's designed right now, it can scale to much heavier machines. So uh, basically, stacking multiple of these together. I'm showing 70 inches on that page number eight but when I look at the more detailed numbers on page seven it's actually a little less it's probably like 56 inches that the whole whole drive bed is going to be and then we have to do the tracks now for the tracks I mean basically um, I'm actually going to go to the this I'll show you this other document oh, let me go to the the standard I don't know if you've looked at tracks but the standard all the tracks that are out there pretty much have cog drive and then they have these right. rollers, like a, something that's either like a, t a total chain that actually the tracks, track pads bolt onto the chain, or 
somehow the there's a chain like mechanism made by just pins you know just pins and flats together so um but well, let's see so in the FreeCAD 101 tutorial I was looking at actually I was doing the case of the of the mi micro track as a case for studying how we integrate FreeCAD I'm starting to work in FreeCAD a little more so here's the file um, but it shows the I actually pulled out the sprockets that we can use so take a look at that um, there's a the FreeCAD 101 so if you click in there there's so we're working with these I actually 3d printed some of them so that, that's a 3d prints um, on page on page 8 there's the Oh yeah, page nine actually. That's the prototype right now. How it, how that structure looks. Okay, great. Um, so it actually works. It's um, but that means that the idlers, the idlers. Uh, oh yeah, and page eight is the actual cogs that I would use. So I dr I parametrically made one. Just downloaded a parametric spo sprocket generator from the internet from uh, from Thingiverse. So you can create a sprocket with any number of teeth with any given pitch. So I did the one that in a scale model tractor would be equivalent to a 20 inch wheel. So I just printed it out already. I've got that. Um, if you want to see that, that's this nice, one. Nice. So those are the, the drive sprockets. Uh, this actually goes with, so if you have this as the... <laughs> Yeah, so that would actually be on the, the drive sprocket on the bulldozer. And then on top we have the power cube. So, I mean, conceptually it comes together easily. But check this out. If you show this like that, um, let me show you about in the track drawing right here um, on page 8 back in the other document. The design has to be such that the idlers are on the ground because... I'm thinking a very useful design specifications for the track would be that if your track pops, so that means somewhere down the road the track is going to pop somewhere. It could be in the middle of the desert. So I'm designing it such that if the track pops, you can actually hobble back with the bulldozer instead of having to have another bulldozer to pick you back up. So basically that means that the sprocket, the 20 inch diameter sprocket, can still drive it'll basically be it'll have the teeth but also have some surface like idler surface that could actually drive on the ground and then the other sprockets they'll be just freewheeling but they're all on the ground so uh, but you need a minimum in this configuration you, you need the the sprocket on each the no the idler the 12 inch diameter idlers on each side because otherwise the tractor itself would wobble you know it wouldn't be st stable so that's just needed for riding flat on the ground the whole track has to be flat and the five inch idler just supports that that track so that the motor doesn't get hit with the track itself now if we talk about the track design i looked at actually what we could use uh, and i'm figuring on using i saw some of those pictures the other day yeah which ones the one where the guy welded Oh yeah, oh yeah. So that should be in here. So this is this one right here, page ten, in the uh, like this one. So that's basically a. This, uh, yeah, yeah. I clicked that link. I, yeah. The DIY yeah. Continuous DIY continuous track. Yeah, I looked at that the other day. Yeah, and that's basically someone built that. It's definitely. Um, Someone was building a bulldozer. It doesn't look like they ever finished it, but yeah, here are the pictures. But basically, you just yeah. make individual units like that, and then it's pretty much it functions like a chain because all those sprockets there uh, are essentially make for a, a chain, like a chain drive. Now I think this guy quit because I can see by the geometry that there's no way to drive that. Um, if you look at sprocket geometry, this is just inconsistent with any kind of a sprocket geometry that would work. That's why whoever's studying this video here in this OSC FreeCAD thing uh, in the tutorial there, the sprocket 
generator carries a or the way in standard sprockets and chains there's a particular geometry that that has to be used for the design of the sprocket otherwise basically it's the pitch and the chain pitch is the length between the pins and the size of the pin is the other parameter so in our case what we can do uh, going back so getting out of this this track so I could you know, not reading the, th that, I mean, in that forum thread, the guy gave up. Well, I can tell by this picture right here that there's no way to drive this, this track. So that guy got, a, got ahead of himself um, a little bit there. So as far as a workable design, uh, so here's a, here's a track pin detail. Um, what I'm thinking about here. So basically, if you look at that, that would be our sprocket in, on page 13 in the tractor construction set document. If you go to page 13 of that, I don't see you there. Are you there? You're on page 13? Okay, could be. So, yeah, there you go. So there I'm, I'm showing, so that's the side view of the sprocket. So it's the sprocket plus like on it, it has the idler part. Okay, um, I yeah, basically like, I mean, sprocket slash idler. Cause you have to have the tracks ride on, for more stability, you want the tracks to be riding on a, on the idlers. So just okay. one, once one of the four wheels per side will have the sprocket. Um, the rest are all idlers because you can just do the idlers which will basically keep the track in position so they're probably just like on regular bulldozers uh, let's see do I have any pictures um, I mean I don't think I have a picture here but a regular bulldozer will just have uh, the idlers well if you look on page 10 the clo that's the closest the idlers are basically flat and they might have like a ridge on them or like some kind of a thing that that the chain they bound the chain so the chain doesn't slip from side to side so we have to probably put like uh, lips on the sides so that the chain the chain structure that we have basically can be kept from moving side to side because of course the sprocket is going to keep it from moving side to side but you have to keep it from moving side to side everywhere else. So those, so those idlers will have to be shaped such that they, they pretty much hold the chain in between the idler, and could also that, serve could the. That like, could that be like a plate with? You know, uh, I don't know if we'd find a, a big piece of tubing or. Well. Weld it to that. I would say maybe. What's sufficient is if you have two plates, so we're talking to say half inch steel, two plates that ride on the outside of the chain. That would be enough. Oh, I see. You. But that wouldn't drive on the ground if we if we have the emergency operation feasible. So so you got to span that space. So, um, what's a good way to do it? We could find a 12 inch pipe, super heavy pipe, and then weld a you know weld the two uh, two plates on top of it. So basically, yeah, we need the space between those. Uh, it's going to be like a, a structure that. Yeah, basically, if you look at a standard spro uh, idler set. Oh, yeah, like the bot the lower rollers. Yeah, the lower rollers on, on page 10 on the yellow track there. That's basically what we probably want to shape our idlers. Or we can follow what they use there, the, the front idler. The front idler and the lower idlers are shaped differently. Um, but I think probably going with the, I don't know, the lower rollers, that seems conceptually easier. They could bound the chain from both directions as opposed to going into that... Um, yeah, I think that would be that would be the way to go. Cause uh, if you look at page twelve, look at page twelve um, or page thirteen. So, so there would be there's the important detail. There's a roller and a pin. So on slide thirteen, 
so the track would be 12 inches or 10 inches I'm actually thinking 10 inches to make it not too too wide because uh, the track the micro track right now is gonna be about 44 inches wide which is still pretty good so it's quite quite nice um, so keep it to 44 inches so it basically be a the the track pads could be like a two by three half inch angle so the 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 traction is going to be two inches lip and a three inch wide tracks that actually works out for the geometry that i show with the xx8 xs8 h pipe which they call that um two inch two inch xxh and and i show that on on the table in the table on page 16 so i look at those numbers there if you use one inch um, it's called one and a half inch nominal XXH pipe, which has an outer diameter of 1.9 and an inner diameter of 1.1, which would allow a pin to go through it. Because so I'm thinking we would do exactly that. Basically, the pipe or the pin, not the pin, the roller. Call it the roller. The pipe we're calling the roller, like in a roller chain. Uh, basically, we'd stick a pin through that roller so that the geometry works out and also so it's easier to mount the I mean that design works well because a pin with a shorter piece of roller is a good idea so you can just pull that pin and uh, break the track and then the roller actually falls out so you got to catch the roller um, but it would be such that the pin, I mean, one inch pin, grade eight, I mean, that would be plenty for 6,000 pounds of push if you want to scale that with gear down. Right now it's about 2,000 pounds of push without any gear down. That's plenty for a one inch pin. And because you've got that two inch, it's called, I mean, the formal name is 1.5 inch XXH pipe. Um, if you have that pipe there, that would give us a 1.9 inch diameter uh, outer diameter which with a sprocket that I used the sprocket geometry that would work for the um, where the the pin is 1.9 and uh, and the pitch is three inches three inches means that basically the tracks are three inches wide each each track segment is three inches wide so the the so this pin that I printed out here sorry the the cog that would be that's actually to scale for a 1.9 inch outer diameter roller with a three inch pitch track so three inch pitch would basically be the two by three half inch angle that we could use and then weld our um chain structure to that so that's that's one thing i think i think that conceptually the design is pretty sound at this point um the the build challenges so so i modeled this platform and and uh, just 3d print but the build challenge is how do you suspend the idlers because um the front and back idler well let's say we fix the back idler that's that's just fixed the front one we want to have it adjustable so we can tension the track so that's one issue and then the five inch um hanger hanger idler that would have to be tensionable so you tension the track as well uh, so that you well maybe not maybe we just leave the five inch diameter idler fixed in place just the front 12 inch diameter idler has to be uh, movable so that you can tension the track uh, but the deal is if you notice i mean that's actually to scale how the track would actually look with the existing platform and wheel units like a, like like in the 3d print um, but look at look at your screen um, if you look at how far down it is that means that this idler here I mean you can't hang it I mean you have to go down about eight inches the shaft would be like right there so we got to go down we got to span that space and how do we do that I mean I don't know I mean we just figure something out but not a big deal but it just has to go down down quite a bit to you um, plate or you use yeah we, I was thinking either like probably plate is probably good uh, or maybe if you just use I mean just build up two spacer tubes and just you know yeah. put them under something like that but plate or 
I think the plate is probably way easier. I mean, yeah, probably is way easier. Uh, we've got the hole, the bolt holes already for play. We can just cut out a piece of plate and just suspend. If that one axle is fixed, then it's not a problem to just suspend them off a plate, just like these plates. But you know, just um, well about that length. Yeah, that would be fine. Um, here's another thing. There's an easy way to do the idlers, and um, so if you look at the idlers. They, I was thinking, you know, because it gets kind of complicated. There's three idlers per side, so it gets to be a bunch of bearings. But I think a, a good design would be simply that the... Sh so, you know, too many shafts to mount, right? But I think what we can do is make the shaft stiff. So, And this shaft is not on bearings, just the idlers are on bearings. So the shaft can be mounted stiffly to the frame. So for so all those, the bearings bolted to the uh, idler. Yep. Itself. Exactly. If we're using two-inch shafts for the idlers, then each bearing is twenty-five bucks. So for fifty bucks, you get yourself a heavy-duty idler, and that one shaft suspends both of them because the machine is symmetric. So you're using one shaft, but four bearings per shaft when you consider the two sides. But that would be a nice, easy way to mount the shaft. And then the only remaining trick would be to make the front shaft tensionable. Just put some kind of a bolt tensioning mechanism that you can slide it back and forth to tension the track. Because I guess upon putting the track on, you want it loose and then tension it so it's tight. So, and that's it. I mean, I think this is conceptually done deal. I think we can do this. And then we can just put the power cube on top. And then, then we have to work out the, the loader geometry. And that's the basic problem statement. Sounds good. Any questions? What, what are your thoughts on it? Uh, uh, I think that sounds good, right? I mean, nothing. Yeah. Just kind of everything's kind of in place, so you just kind of design to it. Yeah, yeah. And um, if you're, I mean, do you have any questions about this pin geometry, the track pin? So basically, it's a one-inch pin with a cotter pin, grade eight. Right. And then you uh, just cut like about two inches of that 1.5 inch XXH pipe. And uh, done deal, just like in a self-made track in the other picture, just like in this uh, yeah. picture. So, so like on the self-made track, uh, like do you want to weld to the pinch yeah. or do you want to like bolt to that? Or... No, I think welding, like make the, so what I'm seeing here is if you use half inch, we can weld those, basically the chain structure to it. And um, what's going to be replaceable. That's, like not, that's not a scary amount of welding. No, no, not at all. I mean, not too bad. Um, but basically, what's going to wear? It's probably that where the sprocket wears against the roller. That's probably going to be the biggest wear. I mean, the tracks going on soil and all that over time, I mean, a few years are going to wear out. But um, the pins are the bigger concern. So if there's a fixed inner pin, uh, pretty much like, well, I mean... The, basically the roller is going to be the wearable part the roller and sprocket now the sprocket if we start cutting that out of cnc that's just a uh, half inch cnc cut plate and we are actually looking at um building the torch table in time i don't know if you've been following the oh, facebook really? yeah, yeah but yeah man like um just okay, to show you around four by four is that what you're... yeah uh 1.5 inch and four by four and um, it looks actually pretty cool. If you look at, um, I'll give you a link here. Uh, conceptual design. Yeah, if you go through this presentation, I mean, it's all been tested. Uh, actually, yeah, go through this. It's tested and ready for build. The build materials is there. And not only that, open source Z height controller. So they actually figured it out. So they got uh, this commercial Z height controller, and then they, it wasn't working for them, so they just got pissed and developed their own in a few days. So all of that is what you see in there is that's the mechanical, and it's working well. And um, if you want more info on that, look at my log. 
Uh, I just have a development board for the CNC torch table and you can see the uh, the GitHub repository you can download the step file for this so you can view it in FreeCAD. Um, yeah, it's really good. They, they pulled it off really well. I got some sample cuts. Only issue is going to be on this is that we're going to have to protect from the spatter. So we're going to have to put some guard. Uh, even though the tube is it, uh, covers the bearings, there's going to be spatter that gets on the rails all the time. So we're going to have to put like a protector, probably like an angle protector on the front face that gets the spatter. Just put it on the carriage. So um, yeah, that'll be the only trouble spot. But other than that, I mean, this is like... You can build this with a drill press and a hand grinder. So they designed it for Africa. Uh, it's really good. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty good. I mean, these guys are really good engineers, actually. This is, looks dece deceivingly simple, but it's actually got a lot of uh, thought behind it. Yeah, so it's good. So we're looking at, I'm, I'm getting those parts right now, so I uh, hope to have that in like one or two weeks. Uh, then awesome. we'll cut out, yeah, we'll cut out the sprockets. If we don't get to cut it out, we'll just take it to Swiger and have them right. cut out the sprockets and all that. Yeah, so that's about it, yeah. Uh, shout if you got any questions, but uh, so, you, so you got a couple of days that you can work on this? Yep, yep. Uh, probably, I can probably go all day tomorrow and on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and then after that, I'll probably have most of those days until the next Sunday. Sounds good. So yeah, I, I think I have a lot of, you know, like, it's time I can focus in the next week. That'd be great, yeah. Looks pretty good. I mean, I'm basically going to take the the three-inch universal rotors from the off of the, the trencher and just build it, just prototype the tracks and do all of that to prepare for the workshop. Yeah. Okay. Looks really good. Um, okay. Thanks a lot. So, yeah, shout if you got any questions and let's keep in touch on this. Anything else? Right. Or... Awesome. Thanks. Yeah? Okay. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Okay.